Hey, what's up guys? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and I wanted to give a week seven update on the Cordyceps project. So last week I inoculated some of the first tubs and um, we're starting to get some growth on that. So I'll go down to the lab and kind of update on that. And this week we're gonna be inoculating a bunch of individual vessels um, or like little jars of the different phenotypes with the two different kinds of broths to um, help hone in our process. So I like to think of the monotubs as like swinging for a home run. Um, so starting off with just those tubs, I was just wanted to gauge my process on how deep um, I should be filling them and what moisture content is working. So I don't really have high expectations for those first couple liquid cultures that I inoculated. And then I'm gonna be moving into a more conservative approach for testing out these various phenotypes. So I'm gonna be using um, different kinds of jars to see what I like best. And in the future, when I need to pheno hunt for different strains, I can just choose one um, jar in particular. So it's kind of just uh, ironing out the different processes at this point and then hoping for some fruits. So I'll go down in the lab and um, kind of show you guys how those are progressing. It's really cool to see these different strains developing and um, I think we're gonna be getting some fruits here soon. All right. Okay guys, so I've got everything laid out in the hood um, as far as growth is going. Um, we've got all those runner-up strains, about two, four, six, so eight more strains that I'm gonna be doing out on liquid cultures. Um, they're looking really healthy. They just didn't have as fast as growth as those first five. So I'm gonna be doing 13 total trials. Um, and then you can see all these different liquid cultures that have grown out very nicely. Some of them are even forming some um, mycelium on the top, which just tells me that they're searching for some fresh oxygen. Um, this one has a nice uh, micropore tape vent, so you can see there's a lot of air exchange there, whereas some of these um, jars without any kind of air exchange, the growth might be a little less, but I'm not too concerned. Um, this is just for inoculating two jars, so it's kind of overboard what I did with the liquid cultures, but I just wanted to make sure that I had some kind of growth. Um, so you can see the TSB jars compared to the honey jars, um, similar amount of growth. So it's gonna be really interesting to see the differences between medias um, using the different broths, but so far so good. Um, we've got you know some really nice clean looking mycelium in all these jars and I'm really excited to um, move on to the many different phenotypes and then if I come over to my um, my tubs that I inoculated they seem to be getting a lot of growth so this is after one week um, this isolated streak colony seems to be having really good growth on rice. It's about 90% colonized and um, the oats are even doing really well too. Um, you can see that we've got some really nice even colonization and you know the moisture level is a little higher. You can tell the difference between the condensation um, and I think that the rice kind of absorbs the water a little bit better. And then if I come down to my my multi-spore inoculations, it's a lot more splotchy. So I think that that has something to do with all the various phenotypes that are growing out in there. But the goal with this one was to just get um, one kind of fruiting body and then clone that one to create a monoculture. So not as much growth up front, but hopefully we can get a viable culture out of this and then essentially you could skip all of the individual um, inoculations and go right into a multi-score um, to search for the best phenotype. So 
I'll keep the updates on this. Um, it's really important that when these are incubating, it's in the dark. Um, I left a couple plates out of uh, some of these isolated streaks and you can see they're starting to turn a little bit orange and um, this one had a little contamination so I pulled that out into the light and you can see on the very edges it's starting to turn orange so that's an indication that it's about to fruit and it's really important for cordyceps to be incubated in the dark. So that's the update. Um, this is a week seven from Spore. It's going really well and I'll give you guys the update um, as I inoculate these phenotypes in the jars. And like I said, I'm gonna be um, going through the remaining eight different phenotypes this week to make liquid cultures and I'll do a trial runs on those. Maybe we'll get some really cool looking cordyceps. But um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy our content. Share our videos if you think anyone else will find this useful. I really enjoy making these videos and I've been getting tons of feedback and um, comment if you have any suggestions or you know any more information about the cordyceps. Um, it's a very new uh, procedure and I'm trying to help you guys figure out you know what the best substrates are going to be, what the best broth is going to be and it's real time for me so it's super exciting to post all these updates all the time but um, subscribe if you haven't yet and check out our Etsy, Fresh Fungi. Um, we have all of our live cultures and you know, we're gonna be doing some more breeding in the springtime, so get, um, get your cultures while they're fresh. I just released a bunch this past weekend and I've also got um, free poured MEA plates. I'm thinking about doing some different kinds of auger as well. So um, comment if you have any requests for what kind of auger you'd like to see. I'm gonna be putting out some water auger for doing some breeding projects like this or um, possibly some of my own mixes. And um, just let me know if you're interested in a specific type of media and I'll be posting those on my Etsy shortly. All right guys, so until next time, much love.